This week on Midwest Outdoors, Greg Jones is pulling crawler harnesses on Lake of the Woods. Joel Nelson is on the river catching summertime crappies. And we're on Leech Lake pitching jigs for walleyes. You're watching Midwest Outdoors magazine. Since 1967, helping you enjoy the outdoors. Sponsored in part by Rapala, Abu Garcia, Berkeley, Skeeter Boats, and Flow Fast Fuel Transfer Systems. Hi folks, today at Midwest Outdoors, we're guests of Border View Lodge. Joining us on the show is John Thielen and Andy Ellingson. We're gonna take John's boat out, chase down some Lake of the Woods walleyes. Why don't you stay with us? It's gonna be a good time. Yep, crank it in, Andy. Good. How's it feeling? Nice. Is, your, is he gonna net it for you or not? I'm let him <laughs> let him decide. Yeah, <laughs> good job. Like, if you're on Lake of the Woods, everything 19 to 28 has to go back. You get a lot of trophies, but probably about a 17-inch fish right there, perfect yeah. for taking home. It's gonna be tasty. Yum. Good job. Basically, running a two uh, hook crawler setup. A lot of times when you put that on. We're moving pretty good, so I'm actually gonna pinch that that part off right there. No, no need to have the tail on there, it'll help with your hookups. Running a three ounce weight here, two will work too, but uh, then a lead, basically a spinner. A lot of colors out there, but you can never go wrong with gold. Thank you, sir. Let's go. Nice. Double. The daily double. All right. It hers. Been fighting for a while and keeps turning around and going the other way, so. Nice. Did we mention Lake of the Woods has some trophies too? <laughs> there she goes. That was a nice one, but. You know what, that's pretty much an everyday occurrence up here at Lake of the Woods, you know, and if you're uh, bringing your own boat up, one of the nice things is the ramps right next door to Borderview Lodge. You know, it's something you can easily come and do yourself up here. Everybody catches walleyes. Fun one to catch. Here in Lake of the Woods, all the walleyes between 19 and a half and 28 have to be released. It's always good to have a ruler out there. We're gonna need the net. Oh, I was staying straight down. Oh yeah, nice, nice and easy. I yeah. am ready for a job here. I'm gonna make the move. <laughs> well, they'd probably uh, take you, that's for yeah, sure. I'm sure yeah. they would, Andy. Tons you know. of employment options. You get to do this all day. Who wants to be behind a computer, right? You know, Borderview Lodge, they do have opportunities for people that would like to move into the area and and get to enjoy the, the great surroundings. Of course, you gotta do some work, but uh, working around fishing, if you love it, you're gonna love your job. Nice sauger. That one there was a sauger, he's deep hooked. We're gonna keep him anyway, but up here, Lake of the Woods, you can have six fish of that, uh, of those six, four of them can be walleyes. The other two can be sauger. It's great eating fish right there. It tastes just like a walleye. Did you get them? Yeah. Nice job. Nice one. Fish. Oh, you're a fire tiger. Nice Lake of the Woods walleye. A little bit over the slot, but let her go and let her get a little bit bigger for the next time. Whoa, she said. Oh, there oh, you yeah. go. It is an eater. Yeah. Yep. That one's perfect for eating. Yes. You know, at Borderview Lodge, they've got the restaurant right on site. Great place for breakfast in the morning before you go out fishing, lunch served, got the bar there. One of the best things you'll ever experience, catch a walleye, that day bring it in and have it fried up. That fresh fish is as good as it gets. I got a yummy one. There you go. 
Nice, thank you. Pretty going into that yellow net. Yes, it is. Andy, you guys have been up to uh, Border View before? Yes, we have. That was yeah. a charter trip. Yeah, that's Man, the other. was that fun too. That's the other alternative. You can jump on the charter nice boats when you're up there. Nice one. Yeah. Put them in the box. The cabins are always nice and clean. You know, you got the riverside cabins there, you know, great for groups up to like six. You got the ultra modern suites for couples to stay in. The great and the grand cabin for larger groups, sleep numbers up to 12 to 16. And then you've got the point by Border View Lodge. You can put a great big group in there, or probably even host a wedding. Got anything for any size group here at Border View Lodge. Yeah, nice and easy. Never a race to get these fish in, especially when you got a better one. You know, you can see the rod's doing the work. She's doing a good job taking up line when it lets it. Nice. <laughs> nice one. And she's on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's good at that. Get him. Oh, 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 oh. you jinxed me. Yeah. You got the net up twice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell you what, folks, we have had a great day of fishing. A lot of beautiful walleyes just like this one. Had a lot of fun. I know uh, John and Andy here were cranking them in all day long. She sounded like she enjoyed it big time, huh? Just a little, yeah. just a little <laughs> bit, huh? Tell you what, if you want to come up and catch some walleyes like this, have some fun yourself, all you got to do is look up borderviewlodge.com. For Andy Ellingson and John Thielen, I'm Greg Jones. More Midwest Outdoors is coming right up. Down she goes. So I see some speckles up against that cover there, some of that rock. Best way to figure it out is to fish it, so that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> now that's fun right there. Hey everybody, Joel Nelson here with Midwest Outdoors, and today we're fishing a river system for crappies, of all things. I'm just gonna hoist this guy in. Ooh. And one thing about river crappies is they have shoulders. Just beautiful fish. So, you know, everything that I know about summer crappie fishing when it comes to river systems, it's really all about fishing current breaks. And today, that's what we're gonna focus on. Current breaks created by rock, created by timber, created by brush, really anything that stops the current that's where panfish like this are going to be, and we're going to have a great time. So today we're fishing light plastics, really tube jigs, small twister tails, grubs, really anything that has a slow fall rate is what's in order because so often fish in these systems are looking up to feed. There's a lot of shad uh, running up and down the, the sides of the breaks right here. We've got all kinds of different baits and terrestrials, and these fish are actively positioned on these current breaks looking upward. So anything with a slow fall rate is really the ticket. If it's too heavy, you're gonna have some problems catching fish. It needs to drop right in their mouths. Ooh, there we go. That feels pretty good. <laughs> boy, oh boy. Uh, river slabs, what a blast. Ooh, these fish are thick. Like I said earlier, you know, the predominant food source out here is shad. So as you can see, these fish, like they are thick. They are big mouth. They're not afraid to take out big baits. So you don't have to worry so much about the profile or oversizing your plastic, worry about being too large. The biggest trick is really just being light enough so that it drops. And I'll show you a little bit about the technique and what I'm up to and how to get them. So really, the key part of this tactic is a little bit of patience, but a lot of feel. And so often when we're talking panfish rods, you just don't have the equipment to be able to get a bite like this done. And that's why I'm using today what I call, it's the LEP, it's the Legend Elite Panfish by St. Croix. They really spared no expense in going after the pinnacle of technology. This thing fishes more like a high-end walleye or a bass rod than most people's concept of what a panfish rod is. And again, it's super important on a bite like today when we're literally casting out, just trying to keep a tight line, and I'm waiting for a slack line hit. I'm trying to keep the line tight, but the further away I get from the boat, the harder that becomes. So when you're looking for slack line hits, you literally need to feel the bite transmitted through that slack, up through the rod guides, and up to your fingertips. 
And that's a hard thing to do for most fishing rods because most of them just don't have the inherent sensitivity to get that done. So when you're fishing for panfish in the summer months when it's finicky and when it's tough like this, sometimes quality isn't just something that's a, a desirable att attribute, it can literally mean everything. The, the difference between getting bit, catching a fish, and getting nothing. You know, it's a, it's a turbid water system, and especially with any rain, we've had just a little bit recently, bright colors I've always found are really the way to go. And that doesn't always have to mean neons and pinks and so on and so forth. Sometimes it can just mean a contrasting color, a white. A bright white shows up really well in this water. And it just tends to be though that chartreuse, the pinks, the whites, the, the yellows can be real winners here because it's really all about visibility. There's no rattles in a lot of these baits. There's, there's no other attracting characteristics. It's all about the color, the shape and the profile, that rate of fall. And you nail all of those categories, you're gonna get fish. There we go. Oh, that's a nicer one. Look at that fish. Pretty, pretty. I'm gonna go back and get the net for him. I don't wanna lose this fish. <laughs> there you have a river crappie. Look at that thing. The gullet on that fish is a lot more like a largemouth bass than a crappie. Oh, he wasn't going anywhere. He is just stuck fast. He just absolutely lunchboxed that thing. Whew. So look at that. That is a beautiful fish. This is a fish approaching 14 inches, which, you know, for a lot of people, they'll say they'll catch 14s. You'd be surprised what it takes for a fish to be 14 inches when we're talking crappie. So just a beautiful river pig. And I tell you what, it's really simple. You find the river breaks. The, the fish like this, especially trophy crappies like this, they don't want to be in the current. They want to be in soft bottom areas with a little bit of cover, maybe even some rock or stumps nearby, but they want to be out of that current. That's the biggest key. Stay out of the current, make a lot of casts, look for some cover, look on your side imaging, find fish like this, and just slow jig them up. Whew. More Midwest Outdoors after this. Leech Lake in the fall, huh, Tony? A real walleye factory here in Minnesota. Yeah, it's one of those bites that I look forward to all season long. Pitching jigs, shallow, catching giant walleyes, and big numbers of fish. You know, it's, it's just one of those places that's magical in the fall. Let's go get some magic going on Leech Lake. Sounds fun. Right up on the bank, huh, to start us out, Tony? Smoke that Largo Shad, just a little guy to start us out, but. Nice eater. Yeah, we'll take those all day long. And, you know, we're doing a combination here, tag team, teaming them. Tony's throwing a VMC Moon Eye Jig, Neon Moon Eye Jig with Red Tail, and I'm throwing a hybrid swim bait jig with a little three inch Largo Shad. And that's that, you like that albino shad color. Yeah, too, that's a dynamite color. It looks like a shiner or any bait fish that's swimming up here. Just a little guy to start us out. Get a little blood from the hook on him, but we'll let him go. We can get some bigger ones for sure up here on Leech Lake. There's Sean. The big one. All right. Man, did he thump that, Tony? I'm going to plastic, Raj. Side by side, <laughs> red tails and Largo shads. I'm a huge fan of the Largo shad. We were spot locked here with the Minn Kota and just fan casting downwind. Rock face all out in front of us here. This is a big fish, stand down. But when they're in three feet of water, they only go sideways. Wow. Not a bad one. Chunky guy, man. He really thumped it and he fought like a five pounder. These fish <laughs> in the fall, are they, I mean, they are really, they're, they're feeding voraciously and they got a ton of energy. It absolutely crushed that Largo. Awesome bait. I can't believe he's only that big. He fought like a five pounder. <laughs> I'll get him back in. This would be a perfect dinner fish. You know, when they're in two feet of water, they only have one way to go, <laughs> sideways. <laughs> Leech Lake's an awesome destination for sportsmen and families. Lots of choices for lodging up here. The town of Walker is a full service community for 
fishermen and families. There's lots of great shopping, dining, and this is also on the Chippewa National Forest. So you've got some awesome hiking trails, biking trails, and ATV trails up here. Lots of places to explore. And of course, as we're showing you today, the awesome fishing on Leech Lake. Man, are they stacked right in that corner. Well, that's a bigger fish too. It's a nice one. Yeah, they're definitely relating to this corner of the rock. And it's just a good ambush spot for these fish. Walleyes are like that. They're opportunistic feeders, and that's why they're so wind-driven. It's the fact that it's pushing the bait right into a, where they want to be, where they can just sit on the bottom and allow the bait to come right to them. Ooh -hoo. Another feisty. Funky walleye, man. Look at that, a chunker. That's over 20. <laughs> that's the definition of putting the feed bag on right here. Oh, man. That big belly. Look at the belly on that thing. Beautiful. Nice fish. All right, I'm gonna get this girl back in. Tony referenced that neon moon eye jig. There's a couple other jigs we're using for this application. We've got a VMC sleek jigs, a weight forward design. It's got a bait keeper hook on it and a long shank, which is ideal for bigger, bigger minnows like those red tails. And also that three inch Largo shad rigs real nice on that snug right up against the head. We're also using the hybrid swim bait jig. It's got a corkscrew on it to screw that Largo shad right up to the head. You'll see all these jigs have that 3D holographic eye. Durable, bright UV paint finishes on the sleek jigs and the neon moon eye jigs, and a uh, high carbon steel hooks on all these that are very durable and will hold even big fish, so. All right, I threw upwind that cast, and I put another red tail on with that neon moon eye. Well, it's good to mix it up. You know, the water temps are warm. They're a lot warmer than they normally are in the fall. Fish are sort of in transition, and we're catching them a lot of different ways. You know, you can catch them jigs and minnows, pitching jigs. Roger's pitching out deep, I'm pitching shallow. Nice walleye here. It's decent. Yeah, it's a big one. Oh yeah, beauty. Fishing uh, my live bait rod with the with the jig and the red tail. I've got a neon moon eye on, and I'm fishing a St. Croix six foot three icon, medium power, extra fast tip. So a lighter rod for that live bait. Real dandy walleye oh, there. Oh, yeah. baby. There's where that, the shallow ones are, huh? <laughs> nice. That's what I love about Leech Lake fish. I mean, we're literally, even though Roger's pitching out, this way it's four feet of water. And yeah. look at the size of this fish. Right up in shallow water feeding. Just taking advantage of all the bait that's blowing up in here. Oh man, what a chunk. Ooh. Look at that. Fat. That is a beauty. Yeah, look at how fat that belly is. It, in the fall when they're feeding. <laughs> yeah, they're always this healthy out here. They're always feeding. There's so much bait in this lake. That's what makes Leech Lake fun. It has been an awesome day fishing with you, Tony. Nice big one to close her out today. Had a fall catching lots of walleyes with you today. If you'd like to experience Leech Lake, it's leechlake.org, or you can give them a call number on your screen to start planning your fishing trip to central Minnesota. Enjoy some awesome walleye fishing. With Tony Roach, I'm Roger Cormier. We'll be right back with more Midwest Outdoors. Yeah, what a dandy. When you're fishing in the fall, after the lakes turn over, the water becomes super clear. So one thing I always do is I tie a fluorocarbon leader. Here I got the Alberto knot that I'm gonna tie. There's different variations, but this is the one I like to do. Make a loop in your left hand with your fluorocarbon. You're gonna take your main line and you're gonna go underneath. Grab my main line and then I'm gonna wrap it like eight times around. Then you're gonna take your main line and go back through the fluorocarbon loop that you created. I'm gonna pull on all four lines you want to kind of get it a little wet so the knot cinches tight. Therefore, you don't burn your knot. And that is a trustworthy knot. We're going to go ahead and cut our tag lines off. And there we have it, ready for clear water. I'm Casey Knapp, and that's a tip from Midwest Outdoors. So we're out here pulling some baits for some walleyes on a couple downriggers. What we have right now is kind of the standard of the modern trolling setup. Pushing with the kicker motor, got a T9 on the back, steering with the bow mount, all treks on the front. And the neat thing about that is the adjustability and the options. It doesn't matter what the wind does or what your speed does. You can go into your remote, hit cruise control, 
set your speed at the speed that you want to maintain regardless of wind direction, the motor will adjust for that and let you concentrate on your lines and catch more fish. I'm Scott Walsh and that's your Midwest Outdoors tip. General fishing tip that I'd like to offer to whether you're a kayak fisherman, whether you're fishing from a boat, canoe, whatever, if you're chasing northerns, whether it's 20 inchers or 20 pounders, it's a good idea to have a first aid kit with you. Have some band-aids, have some gauze, gloves, something to clean out the wound with. You know, I catch around 500 northerns a year, and each and every year, I still end up coming back bloodied and cleaved uh, from fish. And, and the small ones are the ones you really have to watch out for because they shake their head and sometimes they're really unpredictable. Have a first aid kit with you. You can save a really nasty trip back to the landing by just keeping yourself bundled up, bandaged up. I'm Mark Mall, and that's a Midwest Outdoors tip. Midwest Outdoors helps you enjoy the outdoors with expert articles on where to go, what to use, and how to use it. Your subscription gets you 10 big issues of the best in fishing, hunting, and the great outdoors. Sign up now at MidwestOutdoors.com slash subscribe.